Let's do it to it, honey. 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 Oh, man, except for the mic being muted, everything worked out just fine. Let me bring up the chat. Give me a second. This is Dan, uh, my own Buntag, if you're in the Philippines or Southeast Asia, Australia. And hello to everyone. And no matter where you are in the world, this is Dan and Minnie's Journey. Oh, boy, do we have things to talk about? Oh, yeah, thanks for letting me know. Uh, <laughs> So are you are you able to hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> I had my mic muted. I forgot. Oh yeah, part of the whole thing is I got to unmute the mic. So next time it'll be perfect. Dodger Blues in the house. Mange is here. Anime Reyes. We got uh, Marion Salonga. We have Tobias Michaels is here. Uh, we got. Uh, who else is here? I know there are a whole bunch of people here. There are 12 million people in the house. And I'm happy that there are 12 million people in the house. KK's Travel and Education Vlogs is here. Welcome, welcome. 
We've got, uh, who else? Edward D. Beck is in the house. Okay, let's do the big cash giveaway. Oh, no, the car. I thought you were going and buying the car. <laughs> I thought you said that you would handle the car thing. <laughs> you just came into a big, huge bunch of money, didn't you, Edward D. Beck? So you could certainly afford to pick up the car <laughs> for the big car giveaway. But speaking of giveaway, let's talk about that. We will be doing... Uh, Oh, that's the ass end of the pig. <laughs> that's funny. We will be doing the piggy today. We're gonna do stuff the piggy today, and we're gonna we're gonna draw. Eleven main people are in the house. We're gonna draw for two hundred pesos because Dan is going broke really quickly. <laughs> but I'm gonna talk about that. That's what we're here to talk about. But before we get started, I want you to be aware of the snake in the grass. <laughs> Listen, there's always going to be some snake hanging around trying to uh, 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 trying to get at you. <laughs> See this? <laughs> you got to hold on. If you don't want to get bit, you got to grab them right here, right? Otherwise, you're going to get bit every single time. You got to cut the head off the snake and then bury it because even after you cut the head off the snake they can still bite you <laughs> mike mary too a beautiful woman is here yes indeed ah uh, larry lee is in the house and larry lee i cut you off last time before i read the uh before i gave we gave the uh the words of wisdom and i apologize about that i'm an old man nit band is here nit band mysterious man from the far east <laughs> I don't know why I like saying that. <laughs> hey, you know, Nit Ben and I were pretty good friends in case you can. <laughs> oh, but Nit Ben, get your ass back to work and start earning some money. You know, it's time for you to be off vacation and get back to work. Yeah. What is that commute that you have, Nit Ben? What is that? All the 10 minutes? What's your commute? Two and a half minutes? <laughs> Minnie's here. Minnie's going to be joining us. She's going to be doing the. She's going to be pulling the numbers. All right. So, what are we here to talk about today? So, some of you, I got really, I got really nervous, and I did a breaking news live, and then I later deleted it because I, I got a few of the numbers. Uh, I, you know, incorrect. You know, I need to move the decimal point over one digit. But here's the whole thing. Here's what's going on this morning, and then I'll explain to you why I did that. So. We're at 56.93, which is crazy. That is a crazy number, which means that the Philippine peso is doing the it's doing the it's doing the slide. Doing the slide because the US is doing everything that they can do in order to strengthen the dollar against the Philippine peso. And this is this is a story about America and this is a story about the Philippines because I've of course lived in us of a still have friends and family there that are that are going to be uh suffering soon they just don't know it yet but i'd like because the philippines is in the in the economic uh situation that it's in now which is a much poorer standard of living than what they got in the west my focus of attention is deliver the message with the tilt towards assisting you in understanding what's going on i realize how boring this can be and so uh, when I did that, when I did the live stream the other night, the breaking news, I thought that the Philippine peso was in free fall. I absolutely thought that it was going over the cliff. And this is what this is. And this is what, uh, you know, I had predicted way back in the beginning of the year. I had said, watch out because the peso rate, it may the peso may fall off the cliff. And if it does, what you'll what you'll end up seeing is a whole bunch of happy uh, Westerners celebrating that they're now rich because uh, of the Philippine ex uh, the Philippine ex um, exchange rate falling off the cliff, which means that you know it hit the sixty to one or it hit sixty five to one or we don't know what's going to happen, but there certainly is talk right now going on. If you haven't been paying attention to the news. There's talk about the government 
uh, intervening. There's talk about the Central Bank of the Philippines intervening. I'm not sure how much you know, but this is this is based on inflation, a combination of factors, money supply and the United States doing everything they can to strengthen the dollar against foreign currencies because the dollar is hella weak and it's causing economic problems at home. And so, but unfortunately, when the United States decide that they're going to go ahead and, and raise interest rates, it causes a whole bunch of discomfort for everybody else. And so, uh, hmm, what do we do? What do we do? It's a very, very complicated uh, process. Uh, and which I'm not a trained economist. I'm what you call the, uh, what, do, what do they call that economist? The guy that sits back in the comfort comfort of his own of his own home, especially after he gets retired, right? He's got nothing to do except follow the the economy. Yeah, and so Mike, I'm glad you mentioned that the inflation rate is 3.2 percent in Canada. Let me tell you what they're trying to the crap they're trying to feed us in the United States right now, and I'll explain why it absolutely isn't true. Hey, Jay Lynn is here, and my Wilma's in the house, and so Charmaine. Hey, by the way, one of y'all, I think it was Jay Lynn. You did the Brit. Listen, if you haven't seen that that reel of Jay Lynn, I think it's Jay Lynn. And I apologize if it wasn't Jay Lynn who's turning over the omelet. That's a stroke of genius. I want to do it. So that has everything in it. I got hungry, Jay Lynn. I went and I made myself an omelet after watching your reel. I had to go. I had to go make an omelet. I apologize. I apologize if that wasn't your real Jalen, but I couldn't believe it. So, so it was uh, how to flip the omelet without breaking it. Jean Zell, Jean Gard, if you haven't seen it in your, in your uh, feed, go look for that uh, video feed, go look for that reel and give it and give it a like and make it a comment. Uh, Mike married to a pretty lady. I love Granville Island and English Bay. We love it. Don't, there's a lot to like about Canada. Of course, there's an equal amount to hate about Canada. <laughs> a little Canadian joke there. <laughs> oh, it's my it was my Wilma's reel. It's my reel, she said. That Mawelma is a stroke of genius. I'm telling you. Everybody should put up an omelet turning video. It's just a shared a real video. Maybe it's for dance. <laughs> All right. So that Mawama's claiming it. And so I'm glad that I asked, whose video was it? I can open eggs with one hand and flip on the omelet in the pan. Yeah, and speaking of that, Edward, I went and I looked for an omelet pan. I looked for an egg pan in preparation. You know, you have to have all the props, and I realized I didn't have an egg pan. And so I need about I need about seven or eight inches. Hmm. Let me think about that. I'm talking about a seven or eight inch egg pan. That's about what I need in order to do the one-handed trick where you break the egg with one hand and you flip it, you give it the you give it the flip, you know, and you and you fry a perfect, a perfect over easy egg. Of course, a lot of the videos they're just showing uh eight inch, okay, eight inch rounded edge. And of course, you gotta use you gotta use butter. You can't, you don't want to cheat and use oleo, but how do you get that? sizzling sound that you that you need to have a successful reel unless you use uh unless you use oil you know like corn oil or something like that i'll have it all figured out so maybe the maybe the trick is to fry the egg but not eat the egg but that will be hard for dan to do because he loves eggs all right so now we got the piggy we got this i talk about snake in the grass so do they have, do they make hash browns at restaurants there? No, I've never seen. Oh yeah, I've seen it at Denny's to buy it. So I saw it at Denny's at, at uh, Galleria Mall in Cebu. So you have to get on the Jeep or the taxi or the hobble hobble. Uh, and you have to ride in tandem with someone perhaps and head down to the Galleria Mall, uh, which is on what? What's, what's the name of the street? I can't remember. Maximilian? Down there at the end, you know, some kind of way. Nomi, Nomi knows because she lives only a couple of minutes walk away. And uh, Mike is saying, Edward, I can cook a breakfast complete with one hand. 
since I married a beautiful woman, I hold 200 pesos. It shows up on the table. Hey, you know something? I was just thinking. There are a lot of things probably, Mike, that you're capable of doing with just using one hand. Are you using the right or do you prefer the left? <laughs> uh, Nip Ben, oh, Nip Ben, I am never. I'm telling you, you could put you could put a million pesos in front of me. I'm not ever going to eat Baloo. You just take that idea and you could just throw that egg against a brick wall because I am not going to do it. All right, let's let's get back real quick. I'm not going to spend all day talking about this. I just want to tell you what the thread is. So, of course, as you may, may have guessed, Mamini and I, we make our way over to the Dunkin' Donuts yesterday. And guess what? The topic of conversation is all about the exchange rate. It's all about the exchange rate. But it wasn't because they're excited that their money is going to go a hell of a lot further. It more had to do with their concern over how the Filipino people may suffer because as a result of this exchange rate. And so I did the video. I did the video on uh, Nicole is here. Hi, Nicole. I did the video on um, uh, <laughs> Edward T. Beck. Balut smells like ass. I don't know. I haven't had my note. Well, anyway, let's not go there. <laughs> oh, all right. So they were really concerned about it. And now, so uh, the whole point behind me doing the breaking news thing was, you know, everybody, everybody got on. They were mad at me. A lot of people left. They said, hey, Dan, what are you doing scaring everybody over this, over this uh, inflation thing? Life is fine in the Philippines. Everybody's having a good time. Really? I'm going to tell you, they won't be having a good time for long. Once again, I should interject the disclaimer here, uh, and that is that whatever Dan has to say, he's completely and totally wrong 99.9% .9 of the time. Do not try this at home. But at the time that I made that announcement, that breaking news announcement, I saw Mike Mary step in and then step away. Uh, it was at 56.88, and I absolutely, I absolutely believe with all my heart at that moment, that this rate, this was in free fall. Now, a lot of people, they don't know that the Philippine is heavily, heavily in debt. I mean, I mean, it's an emerging economy, that's for sure. But this is going to hurt. Uh, inflation in the United States is going to hurt the emerging, the emerging economies in Southeast Asia. And quite frankly, Southeast Asia, there's usually a buffer that exists in there, and it's because of increased productivity. So historically, you could, you, you'd hurt Southeast Asia, they'd get hurt, but the problem is, is, that, is that productivity was high. So people in the West were still buying spatulas. They were still buying egg pans from people in the East. But guess what? The spatulas are stacking up at the ports of China with no place to go. They're stacking up 40 foot containers of spatulas and the 99 cent store has told them we can't take one more container of those cheap ass plastic spatulas. We will go blind. And that's a fact. So the, so the Philippines, so you think the United States is in debt. The Philippines is in debt to the tune of something like 17 or 18 trillion pesos, which for a country with their GDP pales in comparison to the United States. I mean, exceeds anything that you could ever do the United States that has um, 30, $30 trillion dollars of debt that you can see and probably another trillion, thirty trillion dollars in debt that is hidden. Don't get me started. So fifty-six point nine three, which would make it, I think, about an eight-month high, and this thing may explode and hit sixty per dollar before Christmas. I mean, so here we are in the Philippines. We're we're about ready 
to enter the Christmas season in September. And then all of a sudden you have inflation and you have uh, uh, an impact to the Philippine economy. But let me focus in on why there's going to be impact. Personally, I think he was on an LSD trip. That was just insane. Over 20 bullet holes in the driver's door, and he survived. They can't shoot. That's what the problem is there. I I wouldn't miss, and I don't have that much experience handling weapons. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, New Star. That's right. New Star is there. I think Dodger Blue. I think Dodger Blue knows about New Star. All right, so let's get let's get on with it. So um, here's what the problem is, right? So United States, uh, Princess Sarah, you probably understand this. The United States is telling everybody that oh, we're chasing a two percent increase in growth rate. Now, what they failed to tell you is that uh, this is the re they're all excited because of the recovery from the the global uh, uh, cataclysm that occurred the global cla uh, calamity of 2020. And then so I do a little bit of research and I discovered that where the 2% growth comes from, it comes from the automotive industry restocking their dealerships so that they have a 20-day supply of automobiles to sell, uh, which is common. They usually have, I mean, a 60-day uh, inventory of automobiles on the lot to sell. Well, and so... What they were looking at is they're looking at growth as it relates to productivity because that's how we grow the economy in the United States. We gr we grow it through increased productivity. So we've got we go through these cycles where we lay people off, and the purpose of laying the people off is so we can get the other folks that are left behind that still have a have a job to increase their work to increase their pace, and this usually happens by hitting them with a, with a stick, or it happens because of improved technology. And so you have, so it's all a lie. And this happened in the second quarter. Now the car dealerships are not quite to a 60 day inventory of new cars on the lot, but this is what caused the, uh, the increase to the 2% growth rate in the second quarter of 2023, but it, it cannot be repeated. In other words, it can't be repeated in the third quarter. And this is the reason why I'm saying we're going to see a dramatic economic downturn. Now, here's what the problem is. They also lie to you and tell you that, that uh, the growth rate keeps up with wages, you know? And so you have a declining middle class and then you, you have them trying to sell you the idea that we're doing great because... Uh, the rate of wages is keeping up with the rate of inflation. And that 2% means that we're only 1% behind keeping up with the rate of inflation or keeping up with the real growth rate. And that couldn't be the furthest from the truth. It's a negative territory. When you consider what happened in the second quarter of 2023. So now why, why is this problematic for the Philippines? Because this is because money supply is evaporating from the global economy and that's how the Philippines grows. So in the United States, we have a, we have a big problem. It's a transition to a service economy, which means lower wages. We don't produce anything and government workers are the, are prevailing wage workers. So that means that they're the only ones making the money. Does this sound familiar? It sounds a little bit of uh, like fascism is wreaking it's, it's starting to show its ugly head and it's starting to stink. It's starting to stink the way they're conveying information. Hey, Joe is in the house. All right. So uh, basically what I'm saying here is that the, it becomes problematic because the Philippines becomes a service oriented economy. And I want to make a, a few things. I want to make corrections to a few things I've said. The Philippines is a service oriented economy oriented economy. But what everybody is looking at in the Philippines is they're looking at that young, tasty, educated workforce. And they keep thinking, man, we could go to the Philippines and we could exploit the workforce with lower wages and we could open up our spatula manufacturing plant there. 
You see, better than better idea. We'll go to the province so we can pay them even less money. You know, in order to crank out those spatulas. That's why they're looking towards the Philippines as having hope for the the future for economic growth. The problem is there is no uh, productivity growth going on in the Philippines. You know, they keep replacing people with computers in the Philippines. They're at the forefront of the movement. So when you go into Jolly Beer McDonald's, the first thing you see is a man. Uh, you walk in the door and you see a well-placed computer kiosk thing that you're responsible for going up and hitting all the hitting all the buttons and ordering your food. And then you go up to the counter right now and paying for it. But guess what? The plan for the future is to eliminate the people at the counter and you'll have to pay for your food uh, through the app through the GCash app. That's what's going on here in the Philippines. And so what does that tell you? It tells you that they're eliminating service jobs. And so when you eliminate service jobs, then you're going to impact the Philippine economy with negative growth. And so a lot of people here, they've told me from time to time, they have said, hey, I got no problem. You know, I'm in good shape because my man is a trike driver. My man is a jeepney driver and they know this. And so they, they're coming after them. And how, how do you, how do you come after them? You increase regulations and then you tell them that their jeeps are no longer uh, going to be allowed to enter the city limits of Manila. And then they have to go look for another work, right? Because they no longer can make the wages that they need in order to make a living because they've eliminated their job. And so, folks, I'm telling you, if you have no place to go because you have no work, you don't need to take a trike into town, nor do you need to get on a jeepney. Are you following where this, this whole thing is going? So I tried to show you, I, I put up the rice video because I'm trying to demonstrate that the price of rice is climbing, climbing, climbing to the point of ridiculous and i'm hoping that the philippine government is going to intervene by subsidizing rice purchases and i i would imagine that they'll be doing that in the same way that they're doing that they're doing onions but the rest of the stuff you can't control and so now they have to exploit the export of labor that is their main commodity you know and so uh the correction i need to make is is that it's 10 percent of the gdp the gross domestic product are the remittances coming in from labor, from people working overseas and then returning back the money to the Philippines. And as long as that keeps growing, and so uh, the main objective should be to expand that, which they are. And then there's 10% in agriculture. So 10% of agriculture, and they haven't done anything with agriculture. It used to be a big, huge uh, export product, sugar cane, uh, CNA sugar, and all this other stuff, right? And so now they figured out they need to they need to start working on taking advantage of developing agriculture and they and the Philippine government to their credit, they're also attacking that. So now the now the focus is going to be on exploiting uh, or exporting labor, refocus on agriculture, and uh, and then the third component that makes a lot of sense to me is they've always been electronic manufacturers here in the Philippines, primarily electronic equipment and automotive equipment. They're very similar. They're very they're very similar in the way they take, the, uh, they, uh, you know, they take your pulse and they can tell you they can diagnose real quickly if something's wrong. <laughs> oh, your engine has missed a beat, <laughs> a heartbeat, you know. You've got <laughs> been you've got some problem with a heart valve. <laughs> See, they've already been very good about uh, the assembly and the manufacturing of medical and automotive equipment, and so they they're concentrating their efforts on that. They have the available workforce, and so they can achieve the gross dom domestic product growth by just focusing on those three industries. But service economy is 61% of the GDP of the Philippines and they're eliminating they're eliminating labor in the service economy which is primarily you know uh fast food 
travel agencies, uh, retail, retail uh, shopping in the malls. And I was surprised to learn that it, that the numbers in terms of percentages look an awfully lot, a lot like what's going in the United States and the way that the United States is transitioning to service oriented economy. But the Philippines is already, they're already, uh, they've already eliminated a step, right? And that's the manufacturing uh, sector. Now, why aren't they, where's the steel mill? Where are the steel, where's the steel plants? You know, they could exploit hi, uh, hydroelectric power and different things like that. And they probably will, you know, but uh, the Philippines is like, very much like the United States. It's heavy, heavy, heavily in debt. Back to saying nobody can finance a car truck right now. The banks are overstocked. Yeah. And that's the point. That's the point. That's the very point that I was trying to make is that so productivity was up in the second quarter and it was because they were restocking them from the global calamity. And now they're almost at 60 days of inventory. And then all of a sudden the bank stopped lending. And so, as you know, uh, I don't know if the people here know how that auto car business works, but you know, they're pay, they're paying fees to floor that vehicle. And so they finance them by saying, okay, the first 30 days are on the house. The second 30 days, you're going to pay so much to the, to the uh, finance company or whatever to inventory that vehicle. And so each time this happens, this is how come you see sales on car lots from time to time. Is because cars have been sitting there too long. They've been paying those fees on them and they need to get them off the lot. So it's not free. The car, the, the car manufacturers, yeah, they make money off the sale of the car, but they're also making money off the finance. They're charging you what are called flooring fees, I believe, right? So I'm not in the car business, never been in there. I just know uh, by talking to people, you know, I got a basic idea of how the thing works. All right, so you mitigate it by preparing yourself. Listen, if it doesn't happen and you don't see double digit inflation, all is good. Um, Marcos has said inflation's under control. It's, un it's under control in the West. By the way, the way they do it in the West is they eliminate food and oil from those uh, numbers. And the reason why they do, they're not, they're not wrapped up in, in uh, coming up with the final numbers of inflation. And the reason why they do that makes a lot of sense to me. It's one of the things that does make sense. It's because you have to factor in food and oil production. And it's very, very complicated because one month you'll have uh, the crops will come in. You have all the oranges will come in and they'll hit the street. And then and then they'll have another uh, month where another quarter where the crop was. They had a lot of damage crop due to weather. And so you can't really attach the price of uh, a kilo of oranges to inflation, nor can you do it with oil, see, with a barrel of oil, because it all depends on how much oil they take out of the ground. It's based on productivity. And so if they decide, if OPEC decides we're going to curtail production, we're going to curtail uh, the processing of the oil, right? or we're going to curtail how much we take out of the ground, right? We'll, we'll just take a whole bunch of uh, refineries offline. All this is a manipulation, you know? And so you can't predict when they're going to do that because you can't predict what they're going to do that. You cannot include the price of petrol in the number, in the, in that inflation number, but you know what it is. This is here in the Philippines. It's not like the United States at all from that perspective, because, here, all you would do is take your discretionary funds and put it over. To, you'd move it from one call, one column to the other. I, I mean, if you're a trike rider, oh, Chris is here. If you're a trike driver, you have to put petrol in your vehicle or else you can't make money. And so you'll take your food budget and you're going to move it over into your, into your uh, petrol budget. And that's how it works here in the Philippines. It's just a fact of life. You know, and so uh, <laughs> you're not going to remove the budget from the household. You're just going to move uh, money from column A over to column B. Yeah, eat Sacramento rice. It's nice. Yeah, they love it in Japan because uh, they use that for sushi. sushi. 
They're doing the sushi rolls, California. They call them California rolls, right? That's what they're. That's where they got that from because it's California rice. But even the rice fields in Sacramento are are gone. When I first moved there, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago, out there where the old Arco Arena was, it was nothing but rice fields for as far as you could see. And it made sense. And now what is it? They're all a bunch of houses that will soon be underwater. Why they do it this way, I have no idea. But I built a house that has the potential of being underwater. So I could kind of see how it happens. <laughs> if you really want to be safe, right, build your house way up on the mountain but th make sure it's not ma it's not uh made of uh volcanic ash and then you have to get a you, you have to survey it you have to do a geological survey what it doesn't cost you anything to do a geological survey you just go over to the university and they're going to give you the paperwork because they've already done it they're going to give you the paperwork and they're going to say okay don't build your house there a lot of people still remember what happened uh up there in the hills of babunga you know here here in the island of leite you know, all the once the water saturated the hillside, all the all those homes came crashing down, and hundreds of people lost their lives. Uh, USA starting to import, yes, and that's how that's how the Philippines will will achieve that growth rate is they'll start exporting labor, right? And all of Europe and the West they're going to start sucking it up because all these people are retiring, all these teachers are retiring, and the in the United States this is problematic. And the reason is because everybody say, oh, no, we have plenty of replacement folks for, for all the post-war baby booms that are, boomers that are dying off and retiring and leaving the workforce. Well, they're not, number one, about that point, they're not leaving in the rate that, uh, that you uh, think that they might be. In other words, it's not just like woof, taking off and then you never see or hear from them again. again. They're actually staying around. The reason why they're staying around is because they're at the maximum of their earning potential in their entire careers. So they're like saying, hey, you know, I think I'll just hang around for a few more years and I will eat prime rib every Friday. In other words, that's pretty much what's going on. But yes, although they're, although it's true that you have plenty of echo boomers. Yeah, I know what I just did. Dan's lying. Even though it's true that they have plenty of echo boomers to take the place of all the people that are retiring, uh, from governmental service and from teaching and from the medical profession, all that other stuff. The problem really is, is it's a stratified population of folks. Stratification means that you have some older and some younger. And so even though you have one of the largest populations coming up generationally, I think something like 90 million, I, I'm probably wrong on the number. But it's definitely equal to uh, the post-war baby boomer number of 80 million people, they're stratified in population. The oldest already working in the, in the age 40s and the youngest being five years old. So that's all I'm trying to point out, you know. And so it's a, it skew, it, they skew all these numbers, you know, to try to make you think everything is fine. Ah, don't worry about it. I'll just become a grab driver. There's nothing wrong with delivering food. You just have to make sure you adjust your lifestyle around your income. You know, that's why they're trying to sell all this generation, the next generation, the idea that it's great living in a tent on the sidewalk of the streets of Sacramento. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to live in a microbus. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to share housing with other people. And the answer is communal living. And there certainly isn't anything wrong with people living in a tiny house because that's how they do it here in the Philippines. Uh, but the whole thing is, is it's a little bit different in the Philippines because most of living takes place outdoors. It does not take place inside your house. And I'm going to be doing, a, you'll detect it. I'm going to be doing a, a, a video that's going to be coming up. It's my next one that's in the queue. And it's going to be coming up soon, and it's going to talk about bathroom size in the Philippines. And I had a lot of fun with this, but you'll understand. Uh, you'll understand why I'm why I'm doing this video. You know, it's because people don't live in the in in their bathroom. In the United States, they turn it into a spa. They have soaking tubs. They have big screen TVs in their friggin' 
bathrooms. There are a bunch of gluttonous pigs over there. I know I was one of them. <sighs> Folks, look, it's a pig's ass what's going on in the United States right now. It's a pig's ass. I don't expect that this is going to become a problem here in the Philippines. But I will tell you this. Uh, I think I did mention on the live stream. When I'm walking through the mall, especially at the Galleria, people are pulling my shirt saying, come here, sir. Come here, sir. I have a fantastic investment opportunity for you. Buy a condo and rent it to some other stupid foreigner who's going to buy it thinking that <laughs> you're going to buy this condo thinking that you're going to get rich <laughs> and there's going to be a huge appreciation and value of your condominium. But it simply is not true, folks. It's smoke and mirrors. They learn from the best, us folks in the West. It is not true. I started laughing at her, and then I started giving her the factoids. The fact is, is that if you rent them on Airbnb, there only is a 56% occupancy based on availability. And everybody thinks that they could just go to Airbnb or Facebook Marketplace and place their house or their apartment or their condo, whatever you have the rent there that they're sucking wind on, that they're stuck with. All you have to do is go there and place it and some fool's going to come along and rent it. And 56% so, and of the time, some Western fool does come along and rent it. So 56 of the people have the smile on, on their face and the rest of them are trying to figure out how to avoid bankruptcy. So uh, let's see. All the dealer car lots are overfull with new beers. Let's see. Then, where's your comment on the American used car market? Isn't isn't it in a total free fall? Well, I'm thinking I'm thinking that yeah, I'm thinking that yeah, there's trouble coming. But but I've already said that. I've already said that that you're going to see uh, an economy that is that is a worse situation than what happened in 2008 when the bank the, when the banks were giving away cheap money or perhaps not. And I'll tell you why perhaps not, because the cheap money, it's on its way because the cheap money is on its way. Look at what, what's happening in China, you know, where they're stimulating the economy by uh, lowering, uh, by uh, subsidizing industries, by taking over, by the government taking over private industry and then keeping the manufacturing plants going, even though there's no place to put the goods. That's happening right now in China. Can you believe it? So here in the United States, the government is transferring governmental responsibility under contracts to private industry, right? Smoke and mirrors. They're transferring wealth, Whoosh, right? In China, they're taking the industries away from private industry that have shuttled their factories because they can no longer make money. It's the same trick. It's a different, you know, it's the same trick. You know? <laughs> it's amazing. You know, it's amazing. But quite frankly, the United States idea may actually prevail, prevail over uh, Chinese. By the way, Chinese don't, doesn't owe, uh, doesn't own as much U.S. debt as you might think. You know, it's a fraction I mean, it's a fraction of the total U.S. debt. It's only, it's not even a billion dollars, I don't think. If you look closely at it, it's only something like, uh, you know, it's not, it's not even a trillion dollars. It's something like $880 billion. What's a billion dollars amongst friends? I'm so used to seeing the, the numbers trillion, billion, you know. Uh, I forget that you can make a billion dollars go around the world 120-something times or whatever it is. I just made that up, folks. Go look it up. Somebody has got to have done the math on that. What's how many times does a trillion dollars go around the globe? <laughs> and that yet yet the U.S. is something like thirty trillion dollars in debt on the surface, and another trillion thirty trillion are hidden. Uh, let's see. Tobias it looks very impressive. Silly question on the screen. Day and night knob. If you turn the knob to daytime, the building disappears. <laughs> oh, that's the other thing. Dodger blue. That was the other thing, right? The other thing is, is that they come in there and I said, well, can I see it? Well, it isn't built yet. 
what do you mean the condo isn't built yet? I said, well, you know, that what you do is you put the money down and you start paying on it. And then mystically, magically, it appears. But in the meantime, you still have to make payments on it. I said, call me. Call me when it's all done. <laughs> Better yet, I'll call you. Because <laughs> we don't do business that way. Because we're not stupid. <laughs> we're not stupid. Who does that? I have a friend who did it. He lost so much money. I mean, trying to keep him contained, he was spinning around so fast like a top, he couldn't believe it. Folks, even in the U.S. economy right now, I've got to tell you something, right? Here's my prediction for the future for housing market in the U.S. versus housing market in the Philippines. The Philippines still is not overbuilt. But don't ever go and, and prepay for a development that may never be built. You know, we already have learned from China on that. Don't do it. You know, you're better off building a native house on a borrowed piece of land. All you're trying to do is keep yourself from getting wet. That's what I keep trying to tell everybody. You don't need all this stuff. You don't need a bathroom that's as big as a, a condominium, for Christ's sake. Who does that? Who in their right mind does that? I suppose somebody who has all the money in the world and nothing to do with it, you know. I suppose they do that. They have a ton of money, you know, and they're gonna and they're gonna use part of that first million dollars they earned building a twelve hundred square foot bathroom. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I don't even spend that much time here. I'm out there, right? How can you how can you know what's going on in the world if you're in here as opposed to being out there? And I see things out there already, you know, in Bye Bye Lake. I already see what's going on. I already see the Jolly Bee, where there were lines wrapped around it that you couldn't even get in. I couldn't even get in to get to get a Chicken Joy. I could not even get in there, folks. And I love Chicken Joy, right? And the reason why I couldn't because there was a line wrapped around that building. And now, guess what? I go in there, and there's no one in there. There's just a few scattered people at lunchtime when that place used to be jam packed. And the same thing in Cebu. I started, I started seeing it, you know, it used to be packed for breakfast, packed for lunch. Cars, we don't use cars here. Yeah, let's talk about it. And so what's going to end up happening in the United States as far as petrol goes? Well, you got to get to work, except if you don't, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. I'm giving you a clue. You got to get to work, except if you don't have to, because you're working out of your house. They're already doing it here. They got call centers where the people, yeah, they have centralized call centers here. I'm not saying they don't. But if you need to hire uh, for um, Amazon during Christmas season, right, they're just hiring everybody and saying, hey, do you have a high-speed uplink? Do you have a current computer that has this much capacity? You're hired. And then they hook them up with all the, the software and the phone and everything everything and they're working out of their own house and people don't even know they're working out of a native house you know that that um, has high speed internet right that's how you make money in the philippines these days no you don't folks don't become a cam girl don't repeat what happened in 2020 because everybody's doing that now no one can make any money Dan, too much car and truck on the lots. It is bad here in, yeah, I know, I know, I know. And so here in the Philippines, it, the cars don't have that kind of influence. And the reason they don't have a, that larger percentage of the gross domestic product, you don't depend on automobiles in order to get people around. If you think about it, it's a really silly way of getting around, you know, except you live in the United States, you need a car. You need a car to go 30 miles to work. You're spending two, three, four hours a day in traffic. That is the silliest GD thing that I've ever heard of. I'm going to sit in LA traffic going from Riverside all the way to downtown where I work. It's a 20 mile ride or 22 mile ride. And you want me to spend two hours getting there and two hours getting home, four hours of my precious life. It don't work that way here because the Filipino people are smarter than that. They work where they live. If I lived in L.A., I would be working in L.A. 
right? And that's the new scheme that the United States has going on because the next generation has, they've already swallowed the script. You know, they already have them dialed in. Well, I want to be a nomad. So I'm going to subscribe to my housing. And then, and then when I move, when I decide to move from LA to Boston, all I have to do is uh, bring up my online subscription service, look for available apartments, and then I move. It's a ridiculous the way we do business in the United States. The Philippines, they grew up this way, right? If they were in the province, they produced by, through farming. They provided for their own families, and that's all you need to do. Life was not supposed to be so complicated. Human existence was not supposed to be so complicated. The neighbors got together and they did a barn raising. And then you shared food that you produced with your neighbors. And that was your entire life. And you loved it. You know, but not anymore. We consume, consume, consume. And now they want to bring that consumption, that ideology to the Philippines. We've got home credit. You can take it home today. You know, and then the first bill comes and you go, oh, crap, did I make a mistake? The banks are in a lot, a lot uh, worse shape. You know, the Fed did something really stupid. They said, hey, you don't ha you don't have to have any cash reserves. You don't even have to have 10 percent in cash reserves. Just invent money out of thin air. They gave them a very simple task, Dodger Blue. And, you know, that we're, we're like thinkers, right? They gave them a very simple task. Any one of us here in this chat that comes here could do their job. We just we just sit behind a desk and we pull money out of our ass and we give it to the, the person who wants to borrow it, right? And we have to have no reserves in order to, you know, establish credit for this person asking for the money. This is what happened in 2008. All we had to do for the application is do this. Can you breathe on this piece of glass here? And you breathe on it. Oh, you fogged it up. Sign here. Here's your check. And they sent you on your merry way. And they're bringing that here, that easy money concept, back here to the Philippines. But now what's going on in the States? Nobody is lending. Why? Because they thought they were smarter than you and me. And they're not. See, they thought they'd be smart. I know what I'll do. You know, instead of lending the money, I'm going to go for the sure thing. And I'm going to I'm going to invest in these bonds. I'm going to invest in equities. I'm going to put the money in the in the money market fund and I'm going to make money off the depositors money. I'm going to tie it up in CDs. I'm going to tie it up for 10 years. And guess what happens? Right. This is what happens. I got no money to work with. It's tied up. You know, it's tied up. And then, and then they do another brilliant thing. They stop lending. And then they raise my credit card interest rates. What do I do when they raise my rate? I, I get the scissors out. And I start cutting up the credit cards. And I get messages. Mr. Dan, why aren't you charging on your credit card? Well, because you guys raise the interest rate. Huh? That don't make no sense. I go, it don't. <laughs> uh, I say, why don't you look back in my history, you know, and uh, what do you see? Huh? Well, you pay off your credit cards in that 30 days. Yep, I absolutely do. Why do you think I do that? I don't understand why anybody does that. Because I don't pay any interest charges on that money. I got free money for 22 days. Who's stupid? You or me, right? I'm the stupid one for having the card and you're the stupid one for giving it to me. Uh, I've been in cu uh, customers' bathrooms that were six meters by six meters, all marble. Disgusting. <laughs> I know. Who in the hell has a marble floor in their bathroom? Are you friggin' kidding me? I hope you trip and fall on a puddle and break your tailbone, you stupid ass. That's part of my uh, video, by the way. How did you know I was going to talk about that? <laughs> I talk about the clay tiles, non-skid. That's what you need in a CR anywhere, right? Because most accidents happen in a CR. 
Don't you get this? I talked about it. Larry Lee, you know, you know me. It's got to be a big ass towel so you don't have to bend over. You got to be able to just fling it and it, it, it dries the crack of your ass. You just fling it like this. And the thing wraps right up into the crack of your ass and dries you up. But, you know, it can be problematic. You have to make sure that you're wearing your cup before you do that. You know, I'm talking about uh, accidents that occur in the bathroom. <laughs> Tim Dziak is here. Yeah, a condo is not a good investment anywhere. Exactly. So why would you think, Tim Dziak, thanks for being here. Thanks for being a fan. But here's the whole thing. Why would you do it if you know, like Tim is already presenting it to you, that it's a crappy investment? Did you see how I did that? I went bathroom to condos to crap. Yeah, I know. I know some of you are making your own jokes up as you go along. Dan, you're full of it. Don't you think I know that? Don't you think I know that? Of course I know that. How are you trained as a, as a trained economist? No, but I have economists on speed dial and they're sending me the most ridiculous BS that you could ever imagine. Ah, beautiful Tox is here. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm just seeing that you stepped into the chat. I so apologize for just noticing you. And for everybody else that I have yet to acknowledge, Hello and welcome here, my, my own Boontag. Welcome to Dan and Minnie's journey. By the way, we're going to be stuffing the pig. After all, we are talking about the global economy. So what affects it? Two things. Money supply. We're talking about dollars because that's a reserve currency. The dollar is how people do business. I know you want to talk about this whole BRICS thing. You know why it's called brick, right? <laughs> because that's how it's going to go over. Just like a number four or a number six hollow block. It's a bunch of talk and there's nothing inside in the middle. You got to fill that up yourself. Boosh! You drop it, it just crumbles. Right? You just let it free fall. Yeah. I mean, it's so e it's so easy to figure out this whole thing, right? The BRICS is going to, it's going to be a bust. It's going to be a bust. First of all, they have to have more money than you. But they do. I'll admit that they do. I mean, they're not as much in debt as the U.S. is. That's for sure. I mean, if you if you look at India, for example, Nip Band, you still hanging around? If you look at India, we owe them money. We owe them like, uh, what, a quarter of a, of a trillion dollars, something like that. How do I know this? I read, folks. Go read. Go read because it impacts your life. So right now, there's no money supply. The dollar's being, it's, it, there's no money supply. There's no, because there's no productivity. And we were depending on Asia to keep us afloat through Christmas time. And they're like, don't think it's going to happen. So we're expecting history to repeat itself like it did in 2008, where Asia was insulated. But the, I'll tell you what, the country is in the best position to be insulated from what's about to happen or what I think is about to happen is the Philippines. And so, yeah, I know, I know you're thinking rider adventure that I'm, I'm telling you that oh, prepare for gloom and doom. They don't call they don't call you gloom and doom, Dan. For nothing. Yeah, I know. I know you're saying that, but here's the whole thing. It still will be bad. It still will be bad. You know? And so uh, I kept thinking about this and I always will practice what I preach. So that's the reason why I'm giving up my lease in Cebu in two months. And so in two months, we're going to come up with a new game plan. And the reason why is because I expect that rental rates will drop. And I told them that. I already told them that. I told them in the very beginning. They said, what? They said, why don't you want to sign a one-year lease? I go, it's because I'm anticipating that rental rates will drop. And they told me, but they haven't. The apartment that you're renting, we went up a thousand pesos per month. We went up another thousand pesos per month. I said, good for you. 
you know, great money if you can get it. Congratulations. <laughs> I only want to sign a six month lease. And of course, if you're not willing to sign a six month lease, I shall go down the road and I will find somebody who is willing to sign a six month lease or their place shall remain vacant. So the whole idea here is that I want to live in the lap of luxury like Tobias. I want to live in that brand new condominium project, not buy a condominium. You know, I won't do that, but I want to rent. Now, even though Tobias, I feel like Tobias has gotten a very, very good rate, an excellent rate on that apartment. Got everything, everything right around him. All he has to do is come downstairs, the elevator doors open, whoop, and everything is there, right? So, all for, you know, very cheap money. 25,000 pesos per month. Because they already know. They're already sucking wind. They probably have stalled on the sales and the rentals of those condos. They know they're sucking wind. They got to do something. They're already panicking. I'm sure that apartment that Tobias has rented used to go for or is projected to bring in eight, nine hundred or a thousand dollars a month U.S. Folks, it's prime real estate. But check this out. Check this out. That owner, that owner investor already knows, you know, that he's going to take it up the rear end on that condo. If he doesn't know it already, you know, there's something wrong with him. <laughs> so I guess my advice to you is don't buy anything. By the way, the people who survive all this that, that, that's coming, the transference of wealth, the trillions of dollars to pay for uh, the fun and games of the U.S. government. If you survive this and you end up being a homeowner in the next 10 years, you will be a multimillionaire. And I'm okay with the idea of just being damned, just being poor. All right. What's what? one last thing I want to talk about? Oh, one last thing. Oh, my God, we're there. <laughs> now, I just, I just did that so you wouldn't leave. Um, <laughs> the jokes on me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm cracking myself up. I now I lost my train of thought, but it was so important. <laughs> it's so important, and now I'm gonna have to wait a few moments until the thought comes back to me. If you if you're a homeowner in the United States. And you, uh, you end up purchasing a house in a desirable neighborhood. You're going to become the, the new millionaire. You know, the middle class is shrinking like crazy in the U.S. And here in the Philippines, they don't have to worry about it because we don't do it. We don't do it that way. You know, if you don't have the cash in order to build the house, don't build it. And so that's how this house was built. I mean, if you went to the bank and you said, you know, if you were a Westerner and you went to a Filipino bank, to borrow money, they're going to say, yeah, we're going to loan it to you, stupid American. <laughs> it's time to get rich. <laughs> they're coming to the party because they know all about 30-year mortgages and things like that. You know, and so I figured out, well, that's a reason not to, not to uh, go there and get a mortgage. <laughs> Where's Nip Van? I saw him. What did you say, Nip Van? Give me my trillion dollars back. Exactly. <laughs> what happens if they call in the debt? What's the U.S. going to do? Say, sue me? <laughs> right? What's the U.S. going to do? Are they going to say, uh, sue me? Oh, my goodness gracious. It's... James is here. Good morning, James. Thanks for coming. Nit Dan, hey, thanks for hanging in there. <laughs> So my apologies to all those people where I, I did that live stream, breaking news live stream. I actually thought that the peso was in, was in free fall, right? Is there a Filipino dream? Yeah, it's the American dream. Why? Because it's American culture that you're living by, you know, with a little bit of the extra stuff thrown in for good measure. Friendly, smiling all the time, and uh, community oriented. Those are the, those are the reasons why Westerners 
want to come over here and destroy your country. <laughs> so why, why should I be surprised when somebody comes up to me and I realize that all they're trying to do here is extract as much money as they can out of my pocket. <laughs> Who's the fool? I'm the, I'm the fool, not them. They know. They know, oh, I'm going to take advantage of this greedy bastard <laughs> who thinks they're going to get rich on this condominium. But the truth of the matter is, this place is just like any other place in Southeast Asia that I've ever been. I've ever been. The dated condos lose value because everybody wants to rent and live in the brand spanking new condo. You know, they abandon condos that are five years or older looking for the brand new ones that are being built in IT Park and Ayala and all, the, all those desirable places. Mike is saying in Ottawa, Canada, a two-bedroom two rental is 27 a month to buy a house in Ottawa starts at 550k and it ain't going to be a whole thrilling experience right to buy a $550,000 home because I just I sold mine in Sacramento which was a fallen down shack for somewhere <laughs> some ridiculous amount of money that even I uh, was ashamed of but hey I don't make the rules it's whatever the market will will bear <laughs> I don't make the rules <laughs> you know but I'll never forget the first time that Man Minnie saw that house and she and she was like sitting there looking at it going, oh man, I stepped in it this time. <laughs> Minnie was like, I stepped in it this time. <laughs> uh, yeah, Dan, you didn't lose your train of thought. This has been derailed. Hey, and speaking of train videos, go over to Jerry, South Texas. You know, if you haven't been into his... Um, he has uh, watched some of his uh, brilliant videos, right? That is Jerry, I call South Texas home. You know, it is truly enjoyable. If I had time, I'd be sitting all day watching Jerry's videos and Larry's and, and, and Tim all day long, you know. Dan, it's 480 a month. It includes internet on the 20th floor. I don't think I will have any, any noise to deal with. And the view is awesome. Well, they don't allow chickens, uh, they don't allow roosters to crow in IT Park. <laughs> That's why every now and again you hear, you know, or you hear, you hear your, and then that's the last you're going to, you won't hear any noise after that. It only lasts for a second. <laughs> they don't allow them to crow there. You know, they, they take the vocal cords out. I've never even seen a chicken in IT Park. I got to tell you the truth. I've never seen a rooster. Yeah, 480. And so we get excited because we see, Oh my gosh, I could live in the lap of luxury for less than 500 bucks a month. Yeah. But I guarantee you, the owner wanted eight. <laughs> Before you came along, they were like, uh oh. You know, in fact, the owner is probably one of the lucky ones renting their condo to you under that whole idea that you could get rich like me, buy a condo in IT Park. You know, but yet, I'm already shopping around, and what I see is uh, I see price decline coming. I might have to wait till December. I might have to wait to Jan January, but hey, I'm a patient man. I got a roof right now that doesn't leak, and so I'm good to go. I could just stay here. You know, I could just stay here, sit and buy by City Leyte. Go to the Dunkin' Donuts like I do every morning. Go have a hamburger whenever I want. And now I can even get inside the Jolly Bee to get Chicken Joy. If you're going to buy in the Philippines, building is better than a condo as long as you are married. Uh, well, here's the whole thing. I didn't build. Here's the whole thing, right? Mini paid for. Mini is the one that saved the money and paid for the whole thing. I. I only came in on the tail end with something like ten or $12,000 when uh, I realized that we'd hit, you know, we'd hit the speed bump and we had to move really, really fast in order to get this thing done. And then I went, I went uh, and borrowed against my 457K uh, without penalty, by the way, and very, very low interest, very smart thing to do. And, and uh, even got the tax deferred on that even got the tax deferred. 
So in other words, Minnie is the one that saved all the money. And one reason Minnie was able to do that was I never went to Minnie and said, once she started working and stuff, I never went to her and say, hey, by the way, pony up and put some, put some Benjamins in my hand, girl. Put the Benjamins right here. I never did that. I said, hey, you earned it. That's your money. I have nothing to do with it. The household's running just fine uh, before you joined it, and it will run just fine um, after you're here, you know. <laughs> and everything just worked out beautifully. And she was able to concentrate on saving enough money to pay for the lot, build the home. And so, no, it doesn't have my it doesn't have my name on it. It's not my home. I'm 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 a I'm a freeloader here. I'm I'm renting I'm renting here uh, for free. <laughs> and so, but basically, we put our money together and we form a household budget every month. And it's trust me when I say it's plenty of money. You know, it's plenty of money to keep this house afloat. Okay, so I remember what I wanted to say. In case you guys don't know it, this is how the Democrats in the United States are going to take um, the presidency again, right? And then, and then both houses. I'm going to tell you how they're going to do it. How we're going to do it. Because I told you guys, I'm not going to lie, if you write me a check, I'm going to vote for you. You know, I'm such a shallow individual. <laughs> it's, it always comes out. It always comes out in me when somebody pays me to vote for them. And that's what's happening now. And you're and, and I know Larry and Tim and everybody, they're saying, what are you talking about, Dan? What I'm talking about is there's a proposal on the table that is gaining steam. That's going to increase your Social Security payment by $200 a month, no matter what kind you receive. And it's across the board. It's a $2,400 bribe. For you to vote the Democrats back into office to offset what's happening with the student loan debacle. And so there, it's done. It's a done deal. You can see this whole thing coming a mile away. So now they're gonna pay me and they're gonna pay Tim and uh and they're gonna and they're gonna pay Larry and whoever else is in here that's receiving that check an extra two hundred dollars per month so that you'll vote for them. I'm happy. $200 a month, that's a hell of a lot of money. $2,400 a year? A, net, a little extra something something in my Social Security paycheck? Are you kidding me? You got my vote. I'm not giving the free money back, but make no mistake about this. It's stimulus money. It's quantitative, it's quantitative easing in a different form. And I'll tell you how the Philippines is doing it. The Philippines is doing it by giving the population food stamps, right? Food stamps. You'll be the only one, Larry. <laughs> You're going to be the only one. <laughs> and he'll be behind bars by the time that happens. So you guys getting me? It's food stamps. Folks, let me ask you a question. I read the Philippine Star News article about that. I re I reckon I exactly they all suck mine. So here's the whole thing. I read the whole Philippine Star newspaper, folks. Just answer me one question. I just have one question to ask about that. How do Filipinos know what food stamps are? They use the term food stamps. They're not food stamps. They come on a credit card, a debit card. Yeah, you get the allocation based on household needs. And that's probably how they're going to uh, keep the economy in check so that people don't go crazy over the price increase and inflation, price increase of rice, the most important commodity to the Philippines. But let me ask you a question. How is it that a regular Filipino citizen knows what the hell a food stamp is when the next generation of U.S. Uh, millennials don't, have never even heard that term before in their entire life because it was a stamp. It was like a stamp or a coupon that you had to present at the grocery checkout stand once you, in order to pay for your free groceries. And it came with a stigma attached to it, right? Everybody knew when you were pulling them out of your wallet that you were buying on coupons. 
They don't use that system anymore. They haven't used that for 30 years, for crying out loud. Mike says, my pension go up twice a year, and it's tax-free. And, you know, what can I say? Uh, long live the queen? Long live the king? I don't know how to, I don't know how to long live Trudeau. So why would they use that term in the Philippine Star newspaper? I'll tell you why, because the story is not for you. The story is for me. You see how the manipulation takes place. It takes place. It doesn't matter. The manipulation will take place. And so they're going to feed you crap. And it doesn't matter where you're at. The media is going to feed you the crap. And they fed me the crap because it took me a whole week or two to realize what they've done. And so here I am. Can you give me a bigger spoon so I could swallow more manure? Because it's so tasty. It is so friggin' tasty. Yummy, yummy. Give me some more manure. I love the stuff. Give me a little Tabasco sauce to put on top. But you wouldn't know what that is. It's a food subsidy program. So why didn't they say food subsidy? Somebody, somebody, please help me out. Why didn't they say, I can't be helped. I know. I know, Tim, I can't be helped. But why? Why didn't they say food subsidy? And then everybody knows. Because it wasn't an article that was meant for you. It was an article that was meant for me to read. So then I could go out there and I could do something. All right? Beware. Always beware. There's always a snake lurking in the grass close by, especially if you're an expat. <laughs> I've oftentimes said, folks, it's not, it's not the Filipinos that you have to worry about. Uh, Mike is saying, I think Dan is drinking his Philippine coffee. Yes. <laughs> it is today. It's great stuff, I'm telling you. So anyway, if I were a Filipino, what would I do? Well, uh, I'm just saying beware, beware, and be, be, be a little bit uh, worried. And so if you have sales, for example, Crystals, you have a business going, right? Crystals, is there a segment of your business that is that is in decline? Now, I know you have a whole bunch of stuff. Multiple income streams. That's the way the Filipinos are used to doing it. Yeah, they're copying the USA economy or terminology and economic strategy. It's consumerism. 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 That's what it's all about here in the Philippines. Don't buy into it. It's not fun. I'm an American. I'm a proud American. But I'm not going to war for anybody over uh, territory. No, I'm not. I'm not going to war in Eastern Europe. I refuse to do it. You know, don't believe in it. They're stealing money for uh, they're they're stealing money for me from me and from you. They could send it over there so they can so a little kid, a little five year old kid, can be uh, can meet their demise if they pick up one of those baseballs. Ah. All the news agencies in the Philippines need to hire editors and proofreaders before they put news online. But why bother? Because the, the U.S. no longer uses editors and proofreaders. And so, Tim, if you go and you you read the law, if you go read the Wall Street Journal, Journal, which was supposed to be a business newspaper, it costs five dollars per day. Go look at what's on the front cover <laughs> and how it's written, you know. You go look and then you tell me, are they using news editors and proofreaders? Are they even talking about business anymore? Are they even talking about business anymore? Only in the back when you see the equity pages. Only in the back. By the way, the stock market, all the markets took a hit. You know, all the markets took a hit. But that's not evidence that, that, that the economy is failing in the U.S., that's not an evidence of anything. Once their order, their buy or sell trade gets there before mine does, then they're screwing me. All right. That's a, that's what I like to say about that. So what this increase in Social Security payment is all about, 
This entitlement program, this entitlement program is all about is quantitative easing. It's economic stimulus. First, they, they fed us this BF. First, they fed us the first pile of crap was, oh, no, we're in trouble. The fund is going to be depleted by 2035. And now they're saying, hey, Dan, be my friend. Vote me back in the office, and I'm going to give you another $200 per month. And you don't have to do anything. And then I have people screaming, it's not an entitlement program. <laughs> I paid for it. Yes, all you YouTubers out there that keep saying that. Go look at the Webster definition of entitlement and you will learn that it's a program that you paid for. You know, if you want to take away the, the entitlement part of your, your, of your presentation and say, you know, it's not free money instead, right? And welfare is not free money. It's paid for. And that's why it's known as an entitlement program. They've changed the definition of it and you let them do it. They changed the definition of it and you bought into it. But this is the whole thing. They're motivated when they do that. There's something, there's some belief that they're trying to feed you. You know, they want you to change your definition. Don't be lazy. And that was not, <laughs> that was not a lazy Larry joke. Don't be lazy. Do the research yourself. Whenever, whenever something like food stamps, you know, is mentioned in a Filipino newspaper article, the first thing you have to do is stop reading and then go and then go back and figure out why they did that. You just stop reading, you go back, start over, start reading it word by word, and then try and figure out what they're trying to do yes uh mike mike about the i ordered a trump prison yeah yeah you know the likelihood that he's going to prison for a conspiracy or something i mean it's a pretty it's a pretty high likelihood because they're catching them they're they're charging them with everything they're throwing everything at them plus the the uh the kitchen sink but the problem with the whole idea is for the united states it may very very well cause a constitutional crisis and this is a thing that a lot of people aren't thinking about. It may very well put a lot of people in harm's way. I don't care if he lives or dies. I really don't. I don't care if he goes to prison or he get, he he's off the hook. Who cares? Because they're playing their own game up there. Once you go, once you put yourself in the in the public arena for all to see, all criticism, all the criticism, and all the bets, and all all the things that that come with it of you being a public figure, you know, it's all fair game. All is fair in love and war. And in this case, the presidency, right? So we have a lot of crooked uh, politicians, you know? We have a lot of uh, crooked politicians all over the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's new? What is actually news about this? You know, but the reason why I'm saying that it may very well uh, cause a constitutional crisis because um, he'll win, he'll win by a landslide victory, and then he, you know, of course he's going to be ineligible to serve. And then what do we do? You know, and then what? People show up at the at the at the federal prison country club where he's playing nine holes of golf, and they do what? See what I'm saying? In other words, it's more problematic than you think. It's a big big deal. And so it's okay to make fun. It's okay to make fun. I agree. All bets are off. You can parody anyone. See, especially if they're 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 a uh, you know if they're in the public arena on YouTube, you know, uh, all bets are off. You can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. And Trump, come on, Mike. I mean, I mean, Mike. It's, it's so easy to make fun of them. Why even bother? You know, why even bother making fun of them? It's so easy. Right. But everybody wants to do it. <laughs> everybody wants to do it. I know some of the stuff is funny. I know, but 
Maybe that's why they do it. But why bother? It would be harder to make fun of somebody else. You know, it's it, it's it's more difficult. Or how should I put this? I know it's harder to make fun of Zelensky, who became president because his talent is playing the piano with his penis. His career was comedian. <laughs> I mean, put all that together. His career was comedian, comedian, a very successful one. And now he's president. All right. So do you see any kind of uh, correlation between what's going on with Trump and, and, and Mr. Z, President Z over there? <laughs> I'm just pointing out. If you think about it, it's it's comedic. It's comedic. Listen, who cares? Listen, Mike, who really cares where he goes or what happens to him? It doesn't have anything to do. It doesn't, listen, it doesn't have anything to do with me whatsoever except gives me fodder, gets me stuff to make fun of and talk about, which it's low-hanging fruit, and so I probably won't do it, you know. I probably won't do it because it's too easy to do. <laughs> you know, because everybody's doing it. Ah, uh, Larry said, Mike, I married a pretty woman and they will sell this prison shirt and make a boatload of money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you'll find out that he started the company before he went to prison. <laughs> That's what, see, see the whole thing. It's just, life is a big circle. You know, it just keeps going. You just keep going round and round and round, you know. And so it'll create a, it'll be a constitutional uh, crisis here in the United States. Yeah, most Filipinos don't read the news. They get the news from Facebook. But yeah, but, and that's, and I've talked about that. And Facebook is a threat because of that reason. They will take over. Meta will take over everything. That's where you'll get your news. That's where you'll socialize. That's where you're going to be doing your banking. That's where you're going to be ordering your products. That's where you're going to be doing everything. Your entire life is on Facebook. And then once you get used to that, you get a message saying your account has been suspended for not uh, complying with our community standards. <laughs> and then you go. <laughs> Charmaine. I'm warning you guys, don't let this happen to you. Marion, don't fall for it. Listen to the Dan. I'm trying to give you what the future looks like. Go do your own research. Better yet, you don't have to because Dan's delivering it the way it happens. Uh, by the way, now's a good time to insert the disclaimer again. Don't listen to anything Dan has to say. This is opinion only. Listen to everything Dan has to say and then put it to work for you. Use it to your best advantage. Tox is here. Crystal's Adventure is here. Crystal's, pay attention to what isn't selling any longer. Pay attention to where the decline in sales is. Is it, is it in uh, rebuilding, rebuilding trikes? Is it in rebuilding engines for taxi cab drivers? Once they start showing up, once they stop showing up, that's the clue that there's a problem in the economy. So everything may be fine. I don't know. We haven't talked that much about it. But once Mark or you guys don't have a rebuild on the schedule, you better start thinking about why. You go back and you start making phone calls to those customers that had told you that they were going to bring their vehicle in next month or their bike in to have the motor rebuilt. Or they were going to get the maintenance work done on their taxi cab. You call them. Find out why you haven't seen them. And then that's going to give you the clue as to whether the economic down cycle is, is happening. I already know it's, it's happening. I know it's happening through observation. You know, if, you, it, you know if, you're, if you're at home all the time and you're doing your farm, you know, you'll, you'll realize it because people aren't coming by as often as they were buying your produce, buying your production, your output, right? But if you're in the city, you observe by, you know, how many people are in the Jollibee? How many people are in the Duncan? 
What's going on with the prices of, of Dunkin' Donuts? What's going on with the price of the coffee? What's happening in the Metro Mart? Uh, are there more people in the discount store than there than there are in the uh, in the main grocery store? You know, you'll start thinking like that. When we went to the market, you saw the market was bare. The market was empty. You know, there was nobody there. They were begging us, come over here, Mr. Dan. Come over here, Mr. Dan. Come over here. I got something to sell you. I got something to tell you. I got something to talk to you about. You know, I went to buy a tuna, baby tuna. I just sat there. I looked at the tuna. I looked at the vendor. No one else around. I said, please, I want to help you out. I want to buy your product. Is there not a senior discount somewhere, somewhere in this fish? Is there not one you could sell me and give me the senior discount? I'm an old man. I might be an American, but I'm an old man. And you know what happened? She said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is a discount for you here. Yeah. And so I ended up getting, uh, you know, 10 pesos off per kilo. Hey, I'll take what I can get. I would have given her the money. She didn't even have to give me the fish. She doesn't know that. Don't go over there now telling her what I was planning on doing. You could see the anguish on the woman's face. You could detect the anguish on the vendor's faces. I don't need to go up there and, and talk to them to know that they're hurting for money. I thought about that, Mike. I thought about that idea, by the way. I like it because it's very inexpensive to do. Pancakes are one of the cheapest uh, things that you can that you can uh, that you can uh, scale to make money. Yeah, don't put any real eggs in it. <laughs> just put powdered eggs in it. Oh, just use powdered milk like everybody else. Yummy, yummy. Hmm. I, I, my pancakes would probably taste way better than anything you can get here uh, because you can't get pancakes here <laughs> unless you're making them at home. All right. Enough of this. I, you know, whether you believe me, you don't believe me. I don't know. You know, I don't know what to do. I know you guys are here for the money. Oh, before we, before we draw, let's stuff the pig. Okay. So I got some, I got some change here. We're going to step the pig, but should I be doing it from the back or should I be doing it from the front? <laughs> yeah, we're going to step the pig with a few ducats today, a little bit of uh, mula mula. So anyway, here it goes. Okay, here it goes. Here it goes. I'm going to put another bill in there. My wife goes crazy over there. What are you doing putting bills in that pig? What are you doing putting bills in the pig? Well, it, I didn't say I was just going to only put coins in the pig. So here's the first contribution right here. Uh, it won't go in. It won't. So that's it. And then I got, I got, you can hear the coin. Stub it in the back end, but be gentle. <laughs> hey, listen, I can't discuss what happens off camera. The Lux Hotel goes for 38 USD a night. I got it for 38. Now, I'm telling you, I've stayed there, man. Me and I, that's one of our favorite places to stay. They have the beautiful buffet. They got everything going on there. It's very conveniently located. If I were to go back there, you know, to Cebu, uh, when we go apartment, honey, I will be staying there. Just you mentioning it makes me want to go stay there. So you got a really good deal. Dez is here. Dez is in the BG. She has laundry to do. Don't use too much of the, uh, you know, of the Tide in there. I'm allergic to it. Just and the Downy. No need to make it. No, no need to to use, but just a few drops of Downy in the clothes. That'll keep them from mill mill doing in this humidity. Uh, Dez. All right. All right. Don't look. No, no, you have to look. I'm not looking because maybe there's a couple of 20 peso coins in here, right? All right. 
you have to guess. You have to guess. Once we compile this, once we get the, once it gets the last week of, uh, of uh, November, so you get the, the, the one who guesses how much money is in the pig, the one who gets the number the closest, right, ends up winning the, the money that's in the pig. Now, if two people, no, don't everybody all guess the same amount. That would be, that would be wrong. Or I forget the next thing I was going to say. I have a feeling somebody's going to hit this number right on the money. Put a few blue or gold ones in there. <laughs> it may happen. I mean, we're putting, we're stuffing the pig in every live stream moving forward to the last week of, just, of, of uh, November. And then you're going to guess. You're going to guess how much is in there. I know you think I'm putting all the money that people don't want in here, like the old five peso coins. They might be in there. Uh, Des is saying my hands are wet. Can't reply, you guys. One by one. I just want to say hello to everybody. Thank you so much, Des, for being here. Thanks for being a fan. All right. Hey, 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 hey. That's it for today. You can hear, of course, you can't, you can't hear the bills shaking around, right? But you can hear. All right. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what to do. You know, I had so much more to talk about, but I'm letting you guys off the hook. Yay! Dan's off the hook. Mildred is here. Mildred, thanks so much for being here. Anna Mae's here. Menge's here. Yeah, Mike, married to a beautiful woman, is here. All right, I got to bring up the list, right? He's bringing his list up, checking it twice. Yada, 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 yada. I'm in the Christmas spirit already. It's coming up. The Christmas spirit is coming. It's going to be here soon. Let's see. Where's my, where's my photos that have, oh, my gosh, I did not do that did i did i accidentally delete the photos i took of the list no worries i have a backup i have a backup why is it like this why is it like this it's because i'm not listening to man mini who said print a copy a hard copy of it. You know, quit doing what you're doing. Print a hard copy of the list. And do I listen to her? No. All right, Ma'am Minnie, are you around? Ah, oh, they're waiting to see you. Let me move the camera around because she always gets... Yeah. Oh, I just saw a gecko run by. Yeah, come on. It's time to, it's time to pull num a number for somebody. Yeah, I moved the camera so they could see. There she is. There's Hi, Man Mini. You're looking lovely as usual, Man Mini. Good morning. Sex Gucci's here. Are you ready oh, yeah. for the snow to return, Larry? Okay, there you go. Oh, she drew one. She has drawn a number. Set that there. What's the number? Oi, this has got to be a winner. Um, AJ, number five, number five, AJ, AJ Mixie going once, AJ Mixie going twice, number five she pulled, AJ Mixie going three times. AJ Mixie. Hi, Christelle. Going four times. Final call for number five. AJ Mixie. Final call. So that's it. So if there's a little bit of internet today, I, delay, I understand it. You guys will tell me. You guys will tell me whether uh, AJ is here or not. Hey, Carl's here. Hey, guys, I'm here again. One, two, three, Charlie. I hope you're feeling well. I hope what? AJ Mixie is here. What the heck? We have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. 
AJ Mixit, congratulations. You've won 200 pesos in this live stream. Uh, when you instant message me, please do me a favor and send me your Gcash number so that I could send this money out. ASAP. So AJ Mixie was here. Is that a lady or a AJ Mixie. I don't know. Maybe it's somebody's uh, ninja account. I can't keep track of everything. I'm an old man. You know, I'm getting I'm getting old and ancient by the second. AJ is the winner. Please. It, uh, they said thank you, Sir Dan Van Mini. Congratulations to AJ. Larry, Hi, lead Sir us out Larry. of this live stream with your words of wisdom, my friend. We'll wait, stand by for uh, Larry to get the to get his. Uh, okay, so <laughs> yeah, definitely number one is remember to be kind to each other. <laughs> That's the most important thing out of everything. Remember to be kind to each other, right? It's okay to be mean to Dan though. <laughs> Just make sure that you're kind to each other. And what's the rest of it? Oh, yeah. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe and healthy. Plus, always try to have fun. And that's the key to always having a smile on your face. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, we'll see bye. you on the next one. Okay. AJ Mixie, I'll be waiting for your, your, uh, your instant message on Messenger. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.